Well, hi everyone, and welcome to another Sunday Live. It's great to be here with you again. Uh, and you'll notice that I'm not outside, I'm actually at St. Peter's St. Paul's Church uh, in Ringwood. Uh, and the reason, uh, or some of the reasons why I'm actually here is because it's belting down with rain outside at the moment. Um, but also, uh, today is Christ is King Sunday. And I thought, what a beautiful building uh, St. Paul's and St. Peter's is. Uh, and uh, got some lovely stained glass window and gives a real kingly feeling uh, about this uh, Sunday live. So I thought, let's uh, do the welcome uh, here. So as I say, it's great to, to be here uh, today. Well, we're going to uh, have a, our opening hymn uh, in a moment, which is How Great Is, How great is Our God. Uh, and we're going to, to listen to that. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have a young man from Wales who's going to come and tell you uh, his uh, story. I think it was Rose that spoke to us uh, last uh, Sunday. And uh, I just thought, you know, it's really good to hear people's testimonies, people's stories, because I think stories are really powerful uh, and convey uh, uh, inner truth of people's faith uh, and trust in God. And so that will be coming after our hymn. But before that happens, uh, let's just uh, dedicate this time to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you for this Sunday. And we just thank you what it reminds us is that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is also uh, the King of all the universe. Our Lord, Christmas is nearly upon us and we'll be thinking about how he humbled himself as a baby. But today, Lord, we are going to be thinking and remembering what a majestic King, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ is. And so, Father God, bless our time today. Amen. Amen. So we're going to listen to our first Beginning and the end 
Hi, my name is Arled. I'm 18 years old. Uh, I go to a church in Slenetley called 21st Century Church. I've known church all my life. Church has been something that I've uh, always gone to. I've grown up in a Christian family. My father and my mother were Christians. I first became a Christian on a camp, a week-long camp in the middle of summer. Uh, when I was 10 years old, we were going through the book of Romans and I just remember feeling very convicted that although I said the right things, I did the right things, I went to church that I didn't um, actually know God and that I didn't truly know him as my friend and my saviour. The journey definitely hit a few snags along the way. Um, between year seven and year nine, I hit secondary school. Within my friendship group, uh, none of them were Christians as well, so I was the only Christian and it, became, it came to the point that I was, I was becoming less of an influencer and becoming more of an influenced person. And uh, they definitely had an influence on my life and uh, I became less in touch with God and I cared a lot less about what I was doing in church. Uh, I didn't really want to attend church at the point. I, I felt like I was being forced to. I didn't really enjoy going. Along with that came a lot of different things, along with my friendship group and along with the fact that I kind of abandoned my walk with God for a few years. Came a lot of uh, being anxious and getting very uh, secretive about how I really felt, although I, I was easily given off a cocky, confident persona. I was, deep down inside, I was getting very anxious about how people thought about me. I was getting really uh, dragged down by my own emotions. A lot of the time I was letting my emotions rule me. Uh, when I was 15, I got asked if I wanted to do a commitment course here in our church. It's, um, it's an eight-week course where you just commit some of your time to really getting to know God more and really get into a, understand the way the church teaches, the way the church uh, works a bit more and um, in that time a bit of maturing going on I definitely felt like uh, I was taking my strides in the right way with God again and um, at the end of the course I decided to get baptised. It's been a journey ever since then and uh, the journey's hit some really good times and it's hit some really bad times. Uh, when I was doing my GCSEs I was doing my first ever maths GCSE and my mum had been very ill for the last year or so with uh, cancer, with very aggressive cancer on the body and um, I just finished my maths GCC, I just closed the book and I got pulled out, the, pulled out to the exam room and I got told that my mum had passed away, she'd uh, passed away, the cancer had uh, taken her and um, it was a really tough time for us as a family, it was, definitely, uh, it was definitely a real hardship for us and we faced a lot of different, I, uh, myself definitely, I was very bitter, I was very angry with God I couldn't understand really why he'd done this, you know, I, I just started taking my steps in the right way with God and now he's all of a sudden, he's chucked this massive hurdle in for me and I was like, well, you couldn't have timed this worse if you wanted to really. What I learned is God's timing happens for a reason and through that, I, my church was so supportive, my friends, my family, all the Christian uh, background and connections I've got uh, really supported me and really helped me through that and us as a family. And a big thing for me as well is uh, that I knew where my mum was was a better place than here. That my mum was in eternity with, with God. You know, where where else would you where else would you want to be?
Well, there's nothing like uh, a log fire on a winter's, a winter's night, is there? Well, a few hundred years ago, there lived a, uh, a merchant uh, and a doctor. And they were really, really good friends. They got on so well. And often on winter's nights, they would get together a bit like this a around a log fire and sort of talk about various things that are going on in the village that they both lived in. Now, the merchant, he was an incredibly uh, wealthy man, but the doctor, he didn't have much. Well, one winter's night, as I say, they were gathered together having a good old natter around the doctor's house. And as they were talking, suddenly the merchant uh, turned to the doctor and said, I really don't understand uh, why you carry on being a doctor. And he said, what do you mean? The doctor replied. He said, well, me, he said, I'm... I'm a really uh, a wealthy man because of the work I do. I get rewarded really well. In fact, I've got more money than I could ever, ever need. But you, you work all the hours under the sun, often for nothing. And you've got, yes, this, this, this home, but it's very small. But you've got nothing else to, to show for all your hard work. Why don't you just stop uh, being a doctor and become a merchant like me? I, I love to take you on. And the doctor smiled and said, my friend, I am much richer in many ways that you cannot even begin to imagine. OK, doctor, I, I know what you mean when you say you're rich, because, of course, you've you've helped people and there's no money could ever pay for that. All that you've done for people. And I'm sure they're really, really grateful. But but still, you haven't got uh, much uh, to show for it. The doctor smiled and said, well, actually, my friend, I have got uh, money and in fact I am more wealthy than you actually know and with that the doctor got up and he walked over to what would be equivalent to a mantel place uh, today and pulled open a drawer and then he put his hand in the drawer and he brought out this enormous uh, ring with this big ruby on it he said there you go look I've got more money than you actually realized and the merchant sort of got up and went and had a look and said, wow, that's got to be worth an absolute fortune. If you sell that, you could buy yourself a bigger house and you could live how you want to live. But the doctor said, no, I'm sorry, my friend, uh, I'm not going to sell it because it's priceless. Well, he said, well, I'm sure you, you get money. For, in fact, I tell you what, let me buy it from you. I'll give you any amount of money you want because I am really wealthy and I can see that it's an expensive ring and I'm sure I'll get my money back, maybe even more. I don't know. Come on, sell me the ring. And he said, no, it's priceless. So with that, they went and sat back down again uh, by the fire and carried on talking about this. And then the merchant said, well, look, why is it priceless? How do you know it's priceless? And he said, because it was given to me by the king. <laughs> well, the merchant with that, he laughed and said, come on, my friend, you're, you're telling a lie. And he said, no, it's absolutely the truth. And so the merchant said, well, how, how did the king give it to you? I mean, you're not friends of the king. And he said, well, it goes like this, the story. One night, a bit like tonight, there was a knock on my door, as often is because I'm a doctor and people come to me for, for help. And this was no different, except that there was a group of people and they all looked very wealthy and very, very important. And there with them was a, a, a boy who was really sick. And the man that was standing in the doorway, who looked like the most important of them all, said, this is my son and he is really, really ill. He might not even make the night. I hear you're the local doctor. Can you please, please help us? And so with that, I brought them in and I nursed the boy uh, back to health. Well, when they were all about to leave, of course, giving all their things, the, 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 the father turned to me and said, I am your king. Well, I couldn't believe it. I said, no, you're, you're kidding. He said, no, I am the king. And he said, I owe you a debt of gratitude that I could never really ever pay back. I want to tell you this. I promise that whenever you are in need or whatever you might need, I will be there for you and I will uh, meet your needs. I will pr pr provide for you. And as a token of my uh, covenant with you or my commitment to you, is my ring and with that he took his ring off and put it in my hand and I said this is too much he said no I won't have it I want you to have this ring to remind you that whenever you are in need I will be there for you and with that they left so my friend that is why this ring is really precious well the merchant then said well my friend you've really got to sell that ring because if it was the king's and that story is amazing it's gonna it's gonna be worth an absolute fortune my friend you must must sell it 
And the merchant uh, carried on all night arguing uh, with the doctor about this. And the doctor kept on saying, no, I'm not going to sell it. Well, that night, the doctor, well, he went to bed and he tossed and turned and he couldn't get this thought out of his mind of what his friend was saying about selling the ring. So by the morning, he decided, well, do you know what? I'm going to sell that ring because actually I could do with a nice big house and I could do with some really nice things. I do work hard and I do deserve good things. So I'm going to sell it. And so that morning he got up uh, and he went to, uh, down to the local jewellers and presented it to the jeweller and said, how much will you give me this, this ring? And the jeweller looked at it and thought, oh, that's worth quite a bit of money, my friend. And then he started to examine it. And as he examined it, he realised uh, that it belonged to the king. And he looked at the doctor and he thought, Pfft, there's no way you're friends with the king. Uh, that You've stolen it from the king. Uh, and the doctor said, no, 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 my friend, I didn't say it. I didn't steal it. Honest, honest, I really didn't. And he told him the story, but the jeweller would not believe it. And therefore, uh, he sent his assistant off to go and get the authorities who returned and arrested the doctor for theft uh, of that particular ring. Well, he was carted uh, off uh, to, to prison and thrown in prison. And there he sat in prison, uh, wallowing in his sorrows and thinking to himself, why did I listen to my friend? You know, I should never have tried to sell that ring. I mean, the king gave me a promise that if I ever needed him, he would be there for me. And that ring was to remind me of that. And what am I doing? Well, why did I try and sell it? Well, there he sat for a few days. And one morning he was just looking out his cell window and he saw uh, the king's messenger. And he thought, oh, what's he doing there? And he was talking to the jailer. And with that, the jailer nodded and then disappeared, leaving uh, the king's messenger waiting in what I guess we would call a, a forecourt area. Well, suddenly there was uh, a noise behind uh, the doctor in his cell because the cell door was being opened. And there stood the jailer. And the jailer declared, we are sorry. We were wrong. We should have believed you. The king did give you that ring. You can go free. Well, with that, there was no hanging around for the doctor. He picked his stuff up and he headed out the door. But then he went and found uh, the king's messenger. And he went up to him and said, oh, I'm so grateful. Can you, can you please tell the king I am so grateful uh, that uh, he told them that what I had said, the story was true. But can you also tell to I'm just so sorry for, for trying to, to, to uh, sell his ring. Please, if he could find it in his heart to forgive me. Well, with that, uh, the messenger said, my friend, calm down. The king is not angry with you uh, at all. He is grateful you, that you saved his son. And with that, uh, he gave the doctor back the ring and said, keep the ring because the king will always keep his promise. And as he said, this ring is a reminder to you that he has made a commitment to you. Again, I, I've been told by the king to say to you that if you ever are in need, I will be there for you. Just call on me and I will assist in any way I can. Well, the doctor headed home and his heart was full of joy and happiness. And he never sold the ring. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story.
from me to not believe Even when my eyes can see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea Well, as I said at the beginning uh, of uh, Sunday Lives, we're celebrating Christ is King Sunday. And it's really important, I think, that we do that, particularly as we are leading into Advent and into uh, Christmas very, very shortly. It's good to be reminded that as we think about baby Jesus, we have to remember that this actual baby Jesus is the King of all the universe. You see, we as Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God, literally, uh, in human uh, form. So as I think about Jesus uh, as king, I kind of think of him in, in two kind of ways. The first one is his literal kingship, that he is the creator of all the heavens and the earth. He was there at the beginning of time and he will be there at the end of time. We believe that Jesus Christ in his second coming will come as king of the universe. He will not be coming back uh, as a baby. He will be returning as a, a king. 
And so when I think of Jesus and I think of his kingship, I think of him as the king of everything and is worthy of all my praise and adoration. And so this Sunday uh, reminds me uh, of his true identity, really, which was kind of hidden uh, at his first coming. Which leads me nice and naturally on to then uh, the second kind of kingship uh, when I think of, of Jesus that he reflects. And that is he's also the servant king. You see, Jesus, who I've just said I believe is the king of the universe, literally gave up all that power and, and glory and became uh, a helpless baby for us, which what we will be thinking about uh, in the next uh, few weeks. But he gave up all that power and all that glory that was rightfully his and humbled himself uh, and became uh, a human like us. And he didn't come into a sort of a palace, uh, born, born to a palace. He was just born to a normal family uh, and lived a normal life here amongst us. And became a carpenter like uh, his father. It wasn't until the last three years of his life that he started to sort of burst out uh, onto the sort of uh, the scene as it were back then 2000 years ago and then of course we got to hear uh, all about him through all the miracles and the things that he did. But I also think that a good way to think of his servantship type of kingship is to think about how he entered into Jerusalem. He didn't come on a white steed which would be a, a sort of signal to the authorities that he was coming in power and authority as a conquering king. He came in uh, on a donkey which is indicating actually that he was coming to bring peace. He was coming as a servant king uh, to the people. But of course uh, a few sort of uh, days later eventually we got to see what real kind of king he was the king of love because he he stretched out his arms and gave his life upon uh, the cross for all of us it's no wonder that jesus said forgive them father for they know not what they do they did not realize that they actually were crucifying literally the uh, the creator god uh, on the cross if they had known they would never have done what they did but he had to humble himself he had to do all that so that the broken relationship between us and god could be restored and so he had to become literally the servant king of all of us and die on that cross and then of course we believe as christians that he rose again from the dead victorious over death and calls upon every single one of us to come and follow our servant uh, king so on this uh, christ is king sunday let us remember that he is the creator god of all the universe but he is also uh, our servant king. I hope you enjoyed uh, my uh, short little story, but I, I kind of, I, I told you that story because I think it really reflects the kind of, uh, of king that we also serve. He is someone uh, that we can trust. The doctor, he should, have, he should have trusted the king, shouldn't he? He shouldn't have tried to sell uh, that ring because it was a, a signal to him or a, a, a covenant sign to him uh, that actually uh, he would always be there for him, that he could trust him. I believe that we can trust our King Jesus. Uh, he has proven his love for each one of us. And like in that story, uh, because we can trust in, on, in him, we can call on him anytime. And like that king in that story, our king says he'll always be there for us. All we have to do is trust and ask him. So if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, I want to offer him to you as we enter into this period of Advent, as we head uh, towards Christmas. Because he really does love you and he has your best interests at heart and that you can truly, truly trust him. Well, Amen. Well, let's uh, come to a, a time of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you that you love us so much. And Lord, we just thank you that we know we can trust you because you are our God. You are the creator of all things. And so on this Christ is King Sunday, we bow before you and we honour you and we worship you. But we also want to worship and praise you in another way because we know that you are worthy of all our trust because you are also our servant king and so father god help us to put our faith and trust in you and believe in your promises and lord when we are feeling down i just pray that each one of us who are listening to this today will fall into your arms literally 
and put our faith in you because you have promised to be there with us. Amen. But also, Lord, we just pray for our world at this time, particularly uh, during this coronavirus period of history. Oh, Lord, there are so many people out there that are suffering in so, so many different ways, whether it be because they've got the actual virus or because they're suffering uh, through other uh, uh, mental illness or they have other things uh, going wrong in their lives and are struggling to get help. I just pray, Father God, for all these people that you will draw close to them and give them a sense of your love and peace in their lives. We also do pray uh, for our government at this time. It is an incredibly challenging time and oh Lord, we all got our own opinions on this, as you know. But Lord, we do pray uh, for Boris Johnson. We do pray for the cabinet. We pray for all those in authority who are seeking to try to lead us through this most difficult of times. Oh Lord, it's good uh, to hear uh, that, uh, that there is some good news uh, on the horizon. Uh, and that uh, you know the scientists and the doctors have found a, a vaccine that will actually uh, help us uh, to get out of this in fact Lord it's it's more than just one it's so many and that's that's great news and so Lord we just pray that the process to to bring this into into community and society will will move quickly uh, so life can return back to normal but also so that it can actually uh, save lives and with that, Lord, in mind, we do pray for all doctors and all nurses and all those who are on frontline services. We do thank you for their commitment uh, to, to the people of this nation. And we just pray, God, that you will give them strength and courage to keep going because at times it must be so hard. And so, Father God, we just again thank you that you are our Lord and our King. And we just offer these prayers to you now in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I'm going to. Uh, we're going to have another another song in a moment, uh, and uh, it's something I've put together. I've did actually put uh, my first edition of it on the associate minister's uh, page, which I do hope that some of you have in, enjoyed. Uh, it's various sort of video clips I've taken uh, over the last uh, few weeks, or while I was on holiday uh, as well. I actually got down got down to Bournemouth Beach when we had all that stormy weather. Uh, so I do hope you enjoy all those video clips. Uh, with a piece of actual music and I just better make sure I get it right which is oh Lord my God when I an awesome uh, wonder which I think is an appropriate hymn uh, for this particular Sunday so that'll be playing in the background but I've also chosen passages of scriptures which I've I've added to it um, which reflect um, you know what I've been talking about today which is putting our trust uh, in God and the last uh, sort of two Bible passages that will appear are actually uh, from uh, the psalm uh, for this particular Sunday that was actually set. So uh, do uh, sit back and uh, listen to O Lord my God when I in awesome wonder. Hear the brook and feel the gentle. 
brings our time to a conclusion i uh, do hope you've enjoyed uh, this uh, sunday live i do uh, encourage you to to feedback uh, any thoughts uh, of how perhaps we can continue to move forward with uh, sunday live into the future uh, and do share uh, and like uh, as they say because that's really really quite important um well as I say, our time is going to come to an end. I'm going to do a very a short blessing. But after I finish, uh, you're going to have some candles appear and, and a piece of music, which is actually uh, advertising uh, what's coming up. Because, of course, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, and uh, so what will come after me finishing speaking will be the actual themes we will be following uh, on Sunday uh, live and then of course all the usual information and you might even get jingle bells something that uh, a little ditty that Matthew uh, put together but it does sort of encourage you to click on and uh, you know go onto our actual website uh, and Facebook page to find out about all the Christmas services that of course will be coming up very very shortly it's looming isn't it well, God bless uh, to you all. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Until next time. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and the ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. And
until the Son of God appears. Our church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services, fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you're able to give to us now, here's how you can help. <laughs> 